in the real world, light bounces thousands of times. We don't have yet computers that can simulate this behavior, but fortunately we don't need to. Usually a few bounces are enough to get the desired effect. To limit the bounces, you have a max bounces settings. These settings are different when using the path and bidirectional method. Let's discuss bidirectional first. We have only two settings here, iDepth and LightDepth. iDepth will describe how complex the path projected from the camera is when light depth is responsible for the maximum amount of light ray bounces. Generally, it is recommended to keep both values even. The more complex the scene is, the more bounces it will require. It will slightly affect computation time, so don't exaggerate if it's not needed. Light depth value may be lower than eye depth only in the scene that doesn't contain a lot of indirect light bounces. Clamping is a threshold, above which all bright points will be flattened. You may know this under the name fireflies. If you have any caustic in your scene, you need to be careful because too low threshold can wipe it out. Fortunately, we don't need to guess this number. Start rendering with clamping turned off, and after a few samples, look score will show you maximum brightness value. In this part, I'm going to talk about Metropolis Sampler, as this is the one recommended to use with bidirectional tracing method. Using this sampler, Engine tries to find the most important areas of the image to concentrate on. That is why this sampler is described by developers as intelligent. The test sample is placed randomly. If it's bright enough, which means potentially interesting, the engine will keep refining the path until max consecutive rejects value will be reached. This parameter describes how many path variants must be rejected before going further. A higher number will allow reaching more accurate results. The next step is the decision, whenever engine will look for another sample in the proximity or will start randomly over again. This behavior is controlled by large mutation probability. If you set the value to 100%, engine will sample in totally random order, so all intelligence will be gone. Extremely small percentage will force the engine to stick to one area and not looking anywhere else. Generally speaking, lower values will give better results, especially when you are rendering a lot of caustics. If large mutation will happen, and the sampler will decide to look nearby, image mutation rate will be responsible for the maximum possible distance from the last sample. The distance is measured in the percentage of rendering image, not the size of the scene. That's it for now. Every question is welcome. If there is no questions, thumbs up and let's jump to another section.